part one, where we're going to go through a few different definitions and finally start to approach this large multi-unit process with a reaction. So for today, we're going to do a few definitions, including yield, selectivity, talk about what a splitter is, discuss single and overall conversions, and then just broach the subject of how do we approach a multi-unit process with a reaction. So to start with our, our yield and selectivity definitions, what we're going to do is we're going to actually return to an example from lecture six. So in lecture six, we had this parallel reaction where we had A reacting to form 2B and A reacting to form 3C. And in this system, we, had, we knew we had some molar flow rates coming in of 20 moles per hour of A, 5 moles per hour of B, and 1 mole per hour of C. And in lecture six, we went through how to approach this problem and solve this parallel reaction, right? And so we set up our table, and ultimately we figured out that at t equals t, we have 10 moles of A, 21 moles of B, and 7 moles of C exiting our reactor. And if you look at the change in the moles of B entering, moles of B and C entering and exiting the reactor, you would see that you've generated 16 moles of B and 6 moles of C. And the reason I'm I want to mention that is that that's really important for when we talk about yield and selectivity. So moving on, well, let's talk about yield. Let's define it. So for our yield, we're going to need that information with regards to the moles of B and or C being produced. And so for us, the definition for yield is it's the moles of your desired product formed divided by the stoichiometric amount of desired product that could be formed. So the denominator is the theoretical amount of your product that you could form if everything went perfectly. All right. Now, for our process in this reaction, right, our, we can say that our desired product was species B. And in that case, we know that we actually produced 16 moles of B. We also know that we had 20 moles of A entering the reactor. We know that for this reaction, A going to 2B, that if all of A, or 20 moles, converted into B, we would have got 40 moles of B forming. So for us, with regards to our yield, we would, have, we would have 16 moles of B actually formed divided by 40 moles of B theoretically forming. And that in this case, for our reactor, we would have 40% uh, 40 yield. All right, and on a, in a similar vein, there's another term that we've already started talking about, which is selectivity. Okay, and selectivity talks about the preference for one product being formed over another. So in ideal world, you normally would want a high selectivity because you'll be talking about for our selectivity, it's equal to the moles of your desired product being formed over divided by your moles of undesired, undesired product formed. So in this example, we, we have 16 moles of B being produced, which we'll say is our desired product and we have six moles of C being produced, our undesired product. So in this case, for our selectivity, we'll calculate it by having 16 moles of B in the numerator, six moles of C in the denominator, giving us a selectivity of 5.33, which is a pretty good selectivity. Again, anything above one is good. The, the higher that number is, the better a selectivity you get for your process. All right, all right, awesome. So now we're going to move on to a couple of other terms, single, single pass and overall conversion. Now, for a single pass conversion, it's the initial moles entering a reactor minus the final moles and exiting the reactor divided by the initial moles entering the reactor. Okay? And for our overall conversion, it's the initial moles entering our system minus the final moles exiting our system divided by the initial moles entering our system. All right? And it sounds like it's the same thing, but there's a slight difference with this because if you have a multi-unit process, we could have a difference with the amount of uh, material entering a reactor versus entering the entire system, as well as exiting the reactor and exiting the entire system. So on the next slide, what I've got is a, an example system where we have 68 moles of A entering a mixer 
We've got 22 moles per hour of A entering the mixer from a recycle stream. We have a reactor with 2A forming B. So in this case, we have 32 moles per hour of A exiting the reactor, 18 moles per hour of B exiting the reactor, and leaving our separator are 10 moles per hour of A and 18 moles per hour of B. So in this case, we're gonna, just like our regular multi-unit operations, uh, when we draw our envelopes, we're gonna do the same thing here to help us out with calculating the single pass and overall conversion. So for our single pass conversion, it's gonna focus just on our reactor. So we're gonna draw an envelope right around the reactor. So in this case, we're focused on the stream entering and exiting the reactor. So for us, that stream that's entering the reactor is our, our, our stream after the mixer. So for us, we actually need to calculate that value. So in this case, we should have 90 moles per hour of A entering the reactor. We also know that we have 32 moles per, moles per hour of A exiting the reactor. So for our single pass conversion, it's gonna be equal to 90 minus 32 divided by 90, right? Moles entering the reactor minus moles exiting the reactor divided by initial moles we had. And so for us, we would have a single pass conversion of 60, 64.4% or 0.644. All right, and now switching gears, we're now gonna try the overall conversion. So if we reset our system, get rid of our single pass envelope, and now focus on the entire system, we're gonna draw an envelope around the entire system, kind of like what we would do for our total material balance, okay? So we're surrounding the entire system. And again, remember, when you have a total material balance, your, your recycle stream does not count as part of the system. Your envelope is going to capture that recycle stream because none of the liquid or none of your fluid is entering or exiting the system. So in this case, we have 68 moles per hour of A entering the entire system and exiting the entire system, we have 10 moles per hour of A so in this case, for our overall conversion, we've got 68 minus 10 divided by 68, giving us an uh, overall conversion of 85.3%, right? Because again, it's the moles entering our system minus the moles exiting our system divided by the moles initially entering our system. Okay, so we've been able to finally cover all the different terms that surround a reaction. And now there's one final unit operation that I wanna to touch upon so that we can finally approach our multi-unit operations with reactions. And that term is a splitter. A splitter is a unit that splits a stream. When this happens, all the streams entering and exiting the splitter are going to have the same composition because it's, again, just splitting your stream up so that you have a higher amount going in one stream and a, a lower amount in the other stream. Okay, and that may be used some of the times for when you're purging your system. You may not need to separate, you may not need to do a separation, you just need to get rid of a little bit so you avoid having accumulation within the system. So in this case, we've got this example where we have streams one, two, and three, components A, B, and C, and since we're a splitter, the composition of one will have is 0.6 for, uh, 0 .6 for mole fraction of 0.6 for A, mole fraction of 0.3 for B, and a mole fraction of 0.1 for C. So then, therefore, in streams two and three, we're going to have, again, the same compositions, okay? And when you have a splitter, there's gonna be some changes with regards to your material balance. We're gonna have something called splitter restrictions. So those splitter restrictions are gonna help us reduce our degrees of freedom. And when you calculate your splitter restrictions, it's gonna be your SR, splitter restrictions, equals n minus one, so your number number of components in your splitter, entering your splitter, times s minus one, the number of splits minus one. Okay? All right, good. So let's, uh, and, and so this is gonna be reducing your, your degrees of freedom. So with the SR, there's, it's gonna be reducing the number of degrees of freedom you have. So if we go, just quick sample problem, Let's do a regular material balance on the system where we have a separator, right? So we have A, B, and C entering our system and we have different amounts of A, B, and C exiting in streams two and three. And we know the initial composition of stream one. So if we do a degree of freedom analysis on this one, we would say that we have nine, nine ISVs because we have three components in all three streams. 
we know that we have two knowns. I know two molar compositions. Remember, remember that the th final molar composition is a redundant one because I can solve for it. We can do three material balances that are independent and that gives me a degree of freedom of four. All right, so now switching gears, let's try this, but now with the splitter. So in this case, we do our degree of freedom analysis. We're gonna have again, nine ISVs. We have two knowns once again. We're gonna be able to do three independent material balances. And now we're gonna add in that splitter restriction term. So it's N minus one times S minus one. So in this case, we have, it's gonna be three minus one. So we have three components entering in minus one. And then we have two splits because we have two streams that are coming off of our splitter. So two minus one, giving us a splitter restriction of two. And so in that case, that's gonna help reduce our degrees of freedom so that we only have two degrees of freedom now. And, and part of that is because streams two and three have the same compositions. All right, congratulations. We've gotten through all these different definitions and now we can finally take on this multi-unit system with a reactor. So on this next slide, I've got an example system, which is actually gonna be part of our in-class assignment related to this lecture. All right, and in here, we've got a large system. We've got a mixer, we've got a reactor, a condenser, and a splitter. And for the system, what we're gonna be doing is we have a reaction the reactor where we're reacting carbon dioxide and hydrogen to form methanol and water. And in this system, I have a few knowns. I've got, I know a mol one molar composition for stream one. I know all the molar compositions for stream two. And I know the molar flow rate of methanol in stream four. And now I figure the, the next best thing to do is, oh, mention that we have a single pass conversion of hydrogen, uh, single pass conversion for hydrogen equal to 0.6. And now we have all our information and we can actually do a degree of freedom analysis on the system. So in this case, we look at the ISVs. We're gonna have 22 of them. And that bracket is to indicate how many ISVs we have per stream, going from stream one all the way through stream seven. All right, and then we have four nodes. We know the items I've listed in the brackets. Now with our material balances, we can do 16 of them and Again, that's based on the doing a, a, an envelope around each of the individual units, starting from your mixer and ending with your splitter. And then we have uh, to increase our degrees of freedom by a value of one, we have a reaction. And we also in our system have a splitter restriction. So in this case, for our splitter restriction, we're gonna substitute in, we have three components that enter the splitter and we have two splits coming off the splitter, giving us a reduction of two for our degrees of freedom. We also have one process specification, which is the single pass conversion of hydrogen. And if you sum that all up, we have zero degrees of freedom. So we can actually solve this problem. And so for the last piece of this lecture, it's just to help you provide, uh, just to provide you a few different tips of how to get going on this problem and then during class uh, we'll actually go through or you'll be able to work through this entire problem and be able to answer any questions you have. So to approach this problem we're going to do a couple of manipulations. So this is actually one of those times that we will want to use a basis. We're going to take a piece of information and convert it into something more useful. So for us we're going to want to use a basis of 100 moles per hour in stream 2. Why? because we have some information for stream two and because that revolves around the reactor. And that's probably, that's where most of the action is happening and it's probably gonna be really important for us to figure out how much of our different re, uh, products will be forming. So that's why we're gonna try it. We're gonna assume a basis for the stream entering our reactor. And because we're doing that, please remember, we have to exchange one of our knowns for our basis. So in this case, we're going to exchange that information about our methanol in stream four for, for our basis in N2. So the, the stream entering our reactor. Okay, so please remember that molar flow rate with methanol 
get rid of it. You can no longer use it. Now that we're solving the problem and we said that N2 is gonna equal 100 moles per hour. And then, because we're assuming this basis, you need to remember at the end of your problem, we're gonna to need to scale up or scale down to finally fulfill that final piece of information in this regard, with, the, with this example, it would be with methanol. Okay, and now uh, we'll get to work on this problem. And now to reca recap, we've talked about yield and selectivity. We talked about a splitter, talked about single and overall conversion, and approaching a unit process with a reaction. So that's everything for lecture seven. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.